Hey everybody, a Texas Stroker Airlines is Performer Shop, LoneStarMopars.com. It is Wednesday, got home from work, it's sunny, it's warm, no wind. Of course, there's a ton of loose dogs and dogs barking, kind of ruins the vibe. So I came out here to the shop and we're at our 34-inch uh, Master Tech service cart. And it's time to expand the capacities. And how are we going to do that? Well, the answer is right here. It's the U.S. General five drawer mechanics cart folding side tray and if you're sitting here and you're looking at that and then you look at this you're like something is not quite right what's going on well currently and i'm kind of baffled uh these uh master tech carts have been out for a while now and you would think this would be like one of the first you know like item specific accessories that they introduce they've not done that they have separate this is something else people don't realize like right back over there my little four drawer they have a standalone tray for the four drawer this is for the five drawer it's a little bit bigger the dimensions are actually different between the two carts let alone you know the pattern but we've got this one right here and you can kind of get a visualization for what it does it has a ton of space a lot of times on the ads for the four and the five drawer you'll see the shelf attached uh, popular misconception is people think, oh, hey, it comes with it. <laughs> it does not. Uh, they very well could come out with something specifically for this cart. If they do and it's better or add some substantial benefit, uh, we might switch and go that route. But for now, this is kind of going to be a quick little, how the heck do we attach this item for a five drawer cart to... <laughs> <laughs> the master tech service card but uh, you can see this is basically what's in the box let me check these texts real quick uh, you can see right here this is kind of what it would be side by side with another box just folded up uh, it's capable of holding a laptop a tablet as you can see here just an assortment of tools what I probably will do with it is parts and a little side accessory deal and it just folds away you can easily pick it up basically just gonna catch and support itself sort of like a triangulated uh, fashion if you will so what we want to do is take a look at what's in the box and then see what we need to do to adapt it to this cart so let me go ahead and get this thing opened up and I will try to give you an overview what were we doing oh yeah opening the box and I've conveniently located everything here in a vacant drawer so <laughs> this is what you get it's the shelf it's instructions and it's a little bit of hardware here so uh, first order of business if you look at this hardware, you'll notice you've got your fastener, just a button head, right? Uh, sort of squared off like a carriage bolt, and then we've got a flange nut, right? you got a washer and a nut, and you're thinking, like, a nut? What's going on here? Well, you know, I don't remember when you attach the handle, there was nothing, you know, involved in that. And that would be 100% correct. You'll also note that is, like, below uh, the depth of where these little brakes are for your uh, pry bars and whatnot. Same thing over here. This is what I'm working with. We've got four holes, you know, all of them sort of like nut zerts back there. And you can basically switch the handle side to side. That's sort of what this is intended for, right? So I've got the handle on the left side. Tray is going to go on the right side. The design of this box is totally different. Again, like if I take my hand in here, you know, I'm getting to probably a good inch two inches above the location of that top nut cert. Uh, and again, right there, I mean, there's just no accessibility to it. Not sure that I can fit back here, but if you take a look at that handle, the way it attaches is just through the sidewall of the box, right? That's the same setup for the five drawer. So what we're working with is hardware that's designed to basically just go through like that. And that's how it would fasten, that's how you would get your strength. I've sort of mocked this up, and what you have here is a uh, M8 by 20 millimeter. And if I could spin this one-handed, which may be more difficult than I thought it was going to be, that's not quite going to cut it. And so what you would want to do is you would say, well, hey, you know, how did this handle attach over here? And the answer is really nice, you know, black hardware that matches the aesthetics of the box. So one of the things some of you will prefer the traditional, you know, zinc, chrome, stainless vibe. Some of you will prefer black or murdered out stuff, especially with this. I prefer black. Uh, sadly, my supplier, uh, they make the rounds every other Wednesday, which is perfect because that's what the day was. So yesterday, I went ahead and hit him up. And what did I get you at? Well, I took the only thing they had available. 
uh, in this. So again, I don't deal in metric hardware. That's what I got. It was an M8 by 25 millimeter. That's stuck in the middle, I assume, is the thread pitch <laughs> metric. Uh, but yeah, right here. So would I prefer that these were black Torx head? Yes. Would I settle for a hex? Yes. And by that, I mean like a hex insert. Uh, but these are just traditional bolts, nothing fancy. Um, but I'm hoping they work. And the good news is, with a tray open, uh, you know, like in fully outright position with stuff on it, you shouldn't see the fasteners much, I don't think. <laughs> and then with it down, I don't think you'll see it either. Uh, truth be told, I'm probably painting these. Uh, it's just an aesthetic thing, sort of like differentiates, you know, when you do your own work versus when you pay someone to do stuff for you. So full custom here <laughs> or whatever, a little bit of paint's worth. But uh, yeah, let's uh, grab one of these guys again. 8 by 25 millimeter, and we're just going to come in, and boom. That's what we're looking for, that's what we've got. So, what I want to do, we'll go ahead and check the bottom hole as well. Looks like we're right on the money. What we need to do, though, is take a gander at the shelf. So, there's the top side, and the bottom side, and all sorts of sides to this thing. If I can open this up enough, we'll lift this guy and try not to scuff anything up but see right down in there those little square holes that is designed again for what they include but you just don't get much length with that uh, we may try it again but we basically have to drill this and I have no space here because I'm against a grill guard and can't open the drawer anymore so I'm gonna get this out and we'll kind of mock it up we're not throwing the box away, we're going to cut it and we're going to make a template. So let's go ahead and get started on that. Alright, so that is the shelf that kind of shows you the way this needs to work. This is going to be riveted here to the hinge, or at least it looks like it is. And then this boxed in where it's folded over, that's got to catch there. That's how that's going to have its strength to sit upright and hold whatever it is you put on it. You could install this backwards, that would not be good. Uh, you can kind of see the square slots there that were intended again for the five drawer in this case. However, if we spin her around, that's about as archaic and as simple as you can get. You can almost just stab it blindly in the dark. Basically just trimmed the box down to where it fits squarely between the black bumpers is what I used. Again, I try to do this to make it just simple for everyone. You don't have to measure anything. Uh, you don't have to like do math. You just stab it you know you can kind of feel it I use my good thumb and you can kind of search for the depression this is super thin cardboard which helps in that regard whatever you have a center punch a punch a marking transfer whatever uh, hex keys the bolts themselves and then you just get it lined up like so and that's going to indicate it and then we're going to take this and we're going to compare it to the shelf that's where what did I do with it got everything but the sharpie so, uh, somewhere, I think maybe it's in my pocket. Nope, I don't know. I've got a Sharpie somewhere. We'll grab that, and uh, we will go to town. So, uh, once I get that marked, we'll kind of show you how it transfers, and then we're ready to drill. And so the marker was down there in those NWS pliers on the gantry crane. This is uh, really awkward. You're probably not going to understand why, even when you see it. <laughs> this is what I'm doing. So, on the back side, if I go into the hood of the truck... You can't really tell. There's like a giant above my pinky. There's like that giant orange tray. It goes down the box there. Uh, I think you get the idea, like towards the ocean of blue paint, right? So <laughs> that's what I've got. I happen to have this giant box here. Some of you won't. I was going to do this on the uh, creeper seat down there, and it was just a little too big. But basically, the tray fits almost as good as what we had with the box template and so I just decided to run with that I have put it in place I've got it sort of edged up on this top side again where the traffic fingers bounce around for you I've got it as flush as I can there while holding and then uh, basically there's just a slight overlap on each end we lined it up I just try to center the box on that shelf so we have the same amount of cardboard hanging over here is there and I mean it's like less than a fingertip on both sides um, and what we're gonna do now is I've gone ahead and drawn with a sharpie I can't see because I'm not, not bending this piece yet 
but we should have it transferred through. Again, this is probably easier if you just take the time to measure, but trying to kind of like simplify this as much as I can, this should get the job done. So let's kind of see what we've got from those transfers. All right, much better look for you right here. Not beautiful, no, but if that looks just like the handle, and that's another thing you could do. If you are able to ascertain your cart and the shelf at the same time, assuming you buy your cart and they still don't have a dedicated shelf for it. If you can pick one up at the store and a color that's suitable for you, sometimes they're not in stock. Uh, if you're able to do that, use the handle as a template. That would be way easier than you don't even have to cut the box up like I did. <laughs> but uh, just again, going as simple as I possibly can here. You can see where we are. What we do in those scribbles is I take a center punch, I hammer it, and then we're just going to drill it out. I'll go see what size bit seems to line up with M8, because I don't know that off the top of my head. Uh, SAE I do, but M8, I don't know. So I'll figure that out, uh, and then we'll uh, drill. Probably advisable to do the top first, make sure you kind of have everything in place. Uh, if you want to slot this for adjustability side to side or up and down, you can do that. Sky is kind of the limit, sort of depends on what you have in your arsenal, but I'm going to get started because if I let go of this, it's going to cascade to the floor. <laughs> and if you're thinking like, dude, clamp it, uh, believe me, I would love to, but this is a box with nothing in it, so yeah. Uh, anyway, we're going to go ahead and finish this off. All right, so this is just kind of a mock-up. You'll note there's only two bolts. There's also no corresponding hole for the bottom. <laughs> and uh, what we did, I went ahead, I marked it as you saw with the Sharpie, center punched it, and then we came in. I always like to drill a smaller hole. I go with eighth inch. That's typically my go-to. Uh, went with 5 sixteenths. Looked like that was going to correspond with an M8 fairly well. It did deburred, filed, cleaned it up. Uh, again, painted surfaces. I recommend you use masking tape. Uh, try to protect the paint as much as possible but uh, the reason I'm filming this now is just so you can kind of see that it fits see that it actually does go into place and then the other thing check this out as I come up up and up that is the best way if you've got two people this would be way easier but as a one-man show if you can just kind of hold the shelf again there's basically three components there is where you see what I've drilled and we've got bolts in with the square uh, recesses for the carriage bolts if this was mating to the factory cart. There's the shelf itself which is sort of tier two that kind of I've swiveled now. And then there's the support tray which is that hinge right there that we're zoomed in on. So think of support and then think of the shelf and then think of that. Um, I guess we can try. <laughs> I drop this down. I don't have those bolts threaded in, so this could be catastrophic, but we'll figure it out. Uh, apologies again, I'm a kind of a one-man show here. Like I said, uh, they're not tight by any stretch of the imagination, but voila, you get a kind of a preview of the finished product. So what I'm going to do is drill the other two holes, uh, and then we'll have that lined up. We'll mock it up again, which I won't film. And then I'll get the flats and the locks, and I'll actually torque these things down so that doesn't flop. But currently, I need two hands, so uh, I'll try. It's really tight in here. By the way, uh, use the Ghidorah du Bird just because it's magnetic and it pulls the chips away. Uh, eighth inch, five sixteenths. Use the Hazette center punch there. Brought over the spring one just in case because it was sitting on the back bumper of the truck. And yeah, use the uh, little Hercules impact with the impact rated bits, just because again, they were handy. And I thought, why not? Since it's all Harbor Freight, we just as well. So yeah, there's kind of a preview. I'll get the other two holes drilled and then we will kind of wrap this up. All right, so moments later, there it is. It is complete. We have got our side shelf designed for the US General 5 drawer cart installed on the Master Tech service cart. Uh, it's working just fine. I kind of, I ran into one issue that's sort of my fault. I just assumed that uh, I had the flat and the lock in that kit <laughs> for the five drawer shelf and we didn't. I didn't buy one. So I typically, anytime I do anything, there's a flat and a lock. Uh, if I use nuts, they're nylocks. Don't need them in this case with a nut cert. But um, subsequently, because of that, I kind of want to wait you throw the paint down you can kind of see right there I just left them as cast and there's zinc coating 
We will paint them eventually. Maybe I'll even get to upgrade the hardware at some point in time. But uh, that is why I didn't go ahead and paint those. I was like, ooh, kind of screwed up on that one. <laughs> it's not vital. I mean, technically, the bracket that bolts to the side of the box itself sort of serves as a washer still. Uh, I'm kind of old school. I prefer to have the flat and the lock and then the bolt kind of tightened down on top of that. So I will complete that at some point in time. For all intents and purposes, this is fine and functional. And the main thing, it lets me get the box out of the way, get the box out of the drawer, uh, continue cleaning up and organizing other things. Uh, obviously, being an M8, we need a 13 millimeter, so that's what we went with. Got the uh, Zet in here. <laughs> and there it is. That kind of gives you a good look at the setup there. You can see the other two. Again, I kept it as basic as possible. <laughs> we literally, if you can cut cardboard to fit, uh, between these two gaps, that's that was my guideline, was just to go right between the black bumpers. We literally felt with our thumb for the depression, punched it, uh, went through, pulled the cardboard off. Now, obviously, you want to try and keep it level, but pulled it off, set it up with the edge of our uh, U.S. General 5 drawer shelf, marked it with a Sharpie, center punched it, 1 8 5 16 we're home free uh, deburr file whatever you need to do again make sure especially on that side against the box and you take the extra time last thing you want to do uh, even if you're always going to have a shelf or whatever if for some reason you like change jobs or you move or something and you want this the handle swapped sides with your shelf that will scuff it up just you know the shelf going up and down it's gonna ride I mean we're not talking like huge things here but every single time I lift up on this end to get that you know table the way this shelf works that's what the support is so if I lift up here that pops out it'll fold down I'll show you here in a second but every single time it's gonna ride up and down just a little bit and so if you have anything rough back there it's going to be rubbing. Uh, that's something else I may do. Um, when I get the flats and the locks, I might come back and put like a felt backing. It's sort of overkill. <laughs> well, it's just one of those things. When you do things yourself, you can do it how you want to. And if it's overkill, who cares? Because you're happy and content with what you did. So uh, right here, it was working for me, holding the ratchet. And now they say one-handed operation on the box. Can we one-hand this? Let's find out. We lift up, you can see the support start swinging, and if you needed to like roll this away for the night or the weekend or some other task, that's the profile you're left with. So it does add just a little bit beyond the bumper, uh, but nothing major. And again, I mean, if you wanted to strap that down, you could put like, you know, a cord around your box, whatever you need to do. You could have like a hook at the bottom or a magnet to pull it. Uh, for most people, it's going to be fine as is, but... Let's see if we can do this one-handed. I got smashed by this thing so bad when I was drilling it that second round. So it truly is one-hand operation. I'm holding a camera in this hand. So there she blows. That is it. I wish I could get you a slightly better look at what we've got. But yeah, that's the U.S. General Master Tech service cart. That is a five-drawer shelf. Again, five-drawer and four-drawer, which if you recall, my little four-drawer back there you would want the dimensions are totally different on those so the four drawer you can make work on the five or this the five i don't think even comes close to fitting the four you can modify anything it's all metal uh, the problem is this is like got a decent powder coat on it so you want to do as little uh, screwing with that as possible but uh, this is definitely possible if you're coming from a four or five drawer with the shelf uh, and you sold it off or you want to sell it and you're going to keep the shelf you absolutely can modify it to make it work here uh, it just takes a little bit of time and again that is about as archaically stupid and simple as you can make something like this and it works beautifully which is why it's still functional uh, but again use the handle measure it whatever works best for you if you want to just go with like hey i don't have access to anything what can i do take the box the shelf is in set it up just like i showed you punch it mark it drill it and you're done so i would recommend though again the bolts right here uh those what we picked up was 25 millimeter the ones that came are 20 i would recommend going with the 25 that way you can run it all the way through i'd also recommend flats and locks for aesthetics with the master tech regardless of your you know primary color black is the accent 
I know, I mean, like, you don't see that really at all. And then when it's down, you don't see anything at all. But just for peace of mind, for those of you that care and go the extra mile in your work, probably want black hardware. So I will paint that. I do think, I'm not the craftiest man in the world, but I think, like, a uh, if there's such a thing as a adhesive-backed felt or something, uh, when I take this back off for the hardware, I could do that. I think that would look uh, work pretty good, give me peace of mind there. Again, my main concern, I don't really care if the shelf gets beat up, but I do care if the box gets beat up. So shelf takes the downside here. And then the other thing right here is uh, you can put drawer liner, you can put shelf paper, you can paint it, you can texture it, truck bed liner, coating, whatever. You can leave it as is. I'm thinking it might look pretty good with a shelf paper. Uh, the thing is, I'm sitting here and I'm thinking, you know, all those magnetic tool accessories we've been testing for storage, I'm like, man, who would ever have a drawer, you know, without a liner anymore? Well, this would actually work well for that, so that's kind of tempting. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's it. Again, totally doable, very, very simple, and you too can mate your uh, four or five drawer with the U.S. General Master Tech. I'll have that linked if you're curious. Obviously, you're going to have to spec out your own color and everything. Uh, and again, some people on the shelves like to spice it up. <laughs> you know, they might do yellow, they might do green, whatever. Uh, they might use, if they came from a green box, they might just pull that shelf and put it on there. But yeah, I'm happy with that. It gives me a nice little work area there, which I'm not going to do anything like crazy. I think the max capacity is like 30 to 40 pounds. It's basically just, you know, if you're like replacing a water pump, you can set the water pump there. You can lay out your gasket. You can have gaskets set up. You can have RTV set, whatever. Uh, if you want a laptop, uh, if you want to like put your most frequently used stuff for a job there in some little mat or hardware, like let's say that you're installing headers for a customer, you can have the hardware set out, whatever you want to do. It's just that much more work area. I suppose we should measure it because we didn't cover that. I'm sure the box <laughs> said something. Luckily the tape is here and I'm not going to do the best job of this because I'm one handing it. So I'm just going to go outside to outside. I hate doing that to you because we care more about the inside. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll be cool. <laughs> so, bear with me. You're looking at the floor of my feet. So basically right on 18 inches. Uh, this is inside by the way. And then I don't know if we should go box out. I guess we will because some of you are going to do that. Basically 18 by 17. If you come inside that pinned hinge, it's roughly, let's just call it 16. So if you didn't catch that, we're basically uh, front to the back, kind of mirroring what we have here. You're looking at 18 inches, and then if you come from this pin all the way over, 16. If you come from the side of the box, all the way over, 17. And again, you simply lift up. Again, be gentle if you care about the finish of your box. You're probably not going to scuff it up since it is powder coated, but be aware, you know, have another point of contact down there. Um, but that's it. That's all I got for you. Hopefully it wasn't too long. Again, box cutters, scissors, shears, whatever. Um, 13 millimeter for your hardware, M8. Sharpie, center punch, eighth inch, 516 drill. That's what I used. Uh, deburring, filing, that's about all you need. So simple, you can have probably this done. If you go overkill and go to the nth degree, you're not looking at but a 20 minute job. So uh, if you just want to get it on the shelf, you can probably have it done in five minutes. But uh, that said, hopefully this helps some of you out. Uh, we've got a ton of accessories. We'll probably make a video on that pretty soon. I've had them just sitting here waiting and I'll get this thing tricked out as best we can. <laughs> so yeah, that is the shelf. Like I said, hopefully it helps you out. LoneStarMopars.com is the website. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, all three at Lone Star Mopars. I'm going to clean this up. I've got a ton of shavings all over the floor now. Can't really see them with the blue. I can. The camera sort of masks that. Now you can see it. Oh, yeah, glorious. Luckily, it's metal, so it's magnetic. I'll suck that sawdust. But uh, yeah, we'll get cleaned up here. I'll get this box thrown away finally. Even this expensive state-of-the-art high-tech template will be cut up and discarded. So uh, that's all I got for you. I hope you have yourself a fantastic weekend. If you've got any tips and tricks, whether it be with the five-drawer shelf, 
Uh, I say five drawer just relating it to the cart. Four drawer with Master Tech. If you like are some super secret insider at Harbor Freight and you know that they're going to release a shelf that's like super awesome and does crazy things and folds out this way and that way and to the side again, feel free to leave a comment. Uh, let people know. But as of me recording this, uh, February 2022, I've had that shelf sitting there for a long time. I wanted to get the box out of here. I felt like I had time tonight. I'm making strides on that front, but uh, if you've got any tips or tricks to help people out here, feel free to leave them. That's the end goal, is just help people out. Uh, and let me know, if this was your setup, if this was your box, would you leave that shelf orange, as is, or would you put a shelf paper? Uh, obviously, since it's going to be going up and down, you either want it to be like magnetic or adhesive-backed. Uh, something you know so it's not just every time you shut it it'll fall off I love a deal but uh, yeah give me your thoughts on that hope you have yourself a fantastic weekend I'll catch you back here for more action from the shop